Hello, this is Haka the Bean, and today we are going to be reading SCP-6500, The Path of the Thief. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get this started. Something to Nothing so that's what's inside the old man, he said to himself. Tony Marquez felt a sudden cold looking in through the human shaped window in the world and at the over its deep black of space. Interrupted at its center by the immense stone structure of this of the temple, floating or maybe drifting, its own impenetrable of stillness evoking a cold that went deeper than merely skin and found in this a small corner of Tony's heart to settle and take root in. No amount of shivers could shake it. The whole in the world itself was splayed. Arms and legs struck directly out. Head tilted all the way back as if the old man had spent his final moments looking up and asking forgiveness from God. Tony knew better than that, though. In short, human shaped wit window was in his nowhere, and though he could not contain with how old the thing may have been, and man was a very generous term. He wasn't ups upset to see it gone. I guess it's a nice send-off for ye, ye old femur breaker. Tony motioned and towards the in his eyes, archaic instrument behind him and to his right, refusing to take his eyes off of that temple in the process. Mm-hmm. Dr. Arceo distractedly agreed, trying to listen to one of the supervising officer's low voice lackeys. Tony instinctively complied as some grabbed his shoulder and turned him towards them. They began to fit some kind of device into a pocket on the front of his combat vest, which he soon recognized as a transmitter. Tony aimed the question out of the side of his mouth. So, you're my guardian angel again? It seemed Logan Arcea was too busy to respond, so Tony directed the same question at a man who he had named to be a stagehand. Hey, buddy. The, the guy looked up into Tony's eyes. Tony tapped the transmitter. Are you just going to be on the other end of this line? The guy blinked a couple of times. Uh, I don't know, he said, before turning about face and walking in completely the other direction. There was another group of people with clipboards and pens who looked to be more on the tech side of things. Tony hopped out his nose. No one ever knew how to talk to the class. They should have classes about that, Tony thought. It occurred to him that such classes might in fact exist and simply ended the it after answering the question. Don't. That may have a goal. Fair enough, he mumbled to himself, turning to place to see if anyone else was about to approach him and do him up in any kind of way. Thankfully, it was only Logan. Sorry, they were chewing my ear off. Logan extended a hand. Marquez, Logan. Logan rolled his eyes. Tony, then. Good to see you. I'll be on the other end of the line, directing you through. Awesome, Tony responded. I like familiar faces. Plus, newbies get tired of me quick. They both show aired a light professional laugh. Why do you might share over the, the, the water cooler and break? Except I was right. Next to the warm hole remains of a vengeful, fetid thing. Such is life, they both thought in their own or private in their own private ways. Do I get any preamble, prologue, or are we starting in me idiot res? Logan threw up eyebrows. Where'd you get that vocabulary? Talk to some place guy. Knew a few things. Thought I'd surprise you. Mission accomplished. Speaking of missions, Tony turned back around to the aforementioned corpse. You're sending me in there? 
There was a pause as both looked at the cliff. Not a literal cliff, but a cliff in the sense that as one looked, they could feel the fall as if they were already falling. Creating towards the bottom, even when they were merely staying at its edge. And with that sense of gravity came an uncomfortable presence of the planet. So if one thought about it long enough, they might imagine they could feel the very spin of the earth. Tempted as it would us to stop all of a sudden instead of flying, dropping past the clean rock, while on towards an uncertain e end. They each shook their head and, and turned back towards the comparatively digestible scene you know, of men, women, neither and both. With speed walking from one place to another, double checking data, testing all their instruments, frantically writing something into notepads, looking here and there, talking with at this person and that, looking in a lot, Tony thought, like Ross figuring out what they're next to put in nest. Yes, look and finish the forgotten thought. We're sending you in there, and we don't have much time for our preamble or prologue. I'll be filling you in over your earpiece as you drift over to it. Sound good? Sounds good, except what earpiece? No one's gone that to you yet? Tony shook his head. Alright, I'll flag someone down for you. And he dispersed, quickly homogenizing with the rest of the researchers and specialists around him. Tony sighed, alone again. He was quickly approached by several more stagehands, doing nearly everything except kissing him on the cheek, giving him a lunchbox, and wishing him a good day at school. Backpack? Check. Rations? Check. Earpiece? Oh, so sorry for missing that before. Check. Knife? Check. Gun? Not sure or where you're going, but check anyways. Alright, it's time to get you in your space suit, one said. I can breathe in space, Tony said. And back. What? Ever since the uh, statue orbiting Earth thing, or maybe it was that Soviet guy. Two things uh, orbiting other things in space. For his action tank is heavy and I don't need it, so forget it. <sighs> so we will check with some other people, made sure everything was truly, really truly was okay, and then they tied a tank to him anyways, because, of course. Slowly but surely, everyone began to filter out of the each tank bird. The slice worry of being stung evaporating as the as a wasp made its way past the doors. So that finally, finally, Tony was alone with nearly double his own weight on his back, facing down at Temple. Facing down that stunning cold, a few degrees cooler than what is accompanied by concurrent stunning silence. Logan's voice came in over the piece. Alright, D E E E E eleven four or twenty four. Use for only his official designation now that higher ups are listening in. You know the drill. Yeah, yeah, got it. There was a pause. Well, sorry, it's e Logan responded. It's even a bit daunting from where I'm sitting, if you could believe it. There was a familiarity that Tony wanted. She cracked a smile. They didn't used to talk to him like that. Even in the cold, clinical world of foundation, somehow he'd worked up a rapport. I believe you. Tony looked at the hole and once more felt that cliff. A low or tone. For fuck's sake, I believe you. Good. Well, enter when ready. As simple as that, spacewalk to the thing. Yes, you've done it before. It should be simple enough. Tony took a deep breath. <sighs> should be. He stepped up to the precipice, his face inches from the cosmic vacuum. Unsure of the exact mechanisms that kept him and the air around him and everything around him for that matter from being sucked through it like a creature in a submarine. But years of experience told him that questions such as those wouldn't get answered. Just walk through. He... Back to himself, forgetting he was on the air. Just walk through, Logan repeated. So he did. Gravity fell out from under him, and Tony was floating in a warped from area familiarity that was space. Tony, green in his, in his own way, the night sky all around him. Well, night, sky, starry sky, forever and in all directions. Nebulae and planets and sparkling little stars dancing in the visor of his spacesuit. 
which he insisted he wouldn't need. He didn't need. He turned around and saw the, the other side of the old man. It was weird that he could even fit through it. The thing wasn't any taller than he was, and he had a whole suit on. Wouldn't that have been an issue? Shook his head. Right, right. Anonymous, anonymous. If he fit, he fit. Next question. How far is it? He asked. Maybe a 20 minute space walk, just pressing the button, and so you'll get there when you get there. Well, that was an honest. His answer, Tony pressed the go button on the MMU, manned and maneuvering unit, which was uh, on what looked like an arm of an armchair extending from his backpack. The versions NASA used were massive, but the foundation obviously was head of the game. The thing was essentially a discardable or add onto his backpack. Not that he would ever, ever want to discard it. A stream of whatever it was started hissing out of his pack which he could only hear in the vacuum of space due to its connection to his body. He started to move forwards, which he had to adjust by moving his body to ensure that forwards was towards the temple and not out into the middle of nowhere. And truly, there was nowhere he could be more in the middle of nowhere than space. Well, this gives us some time. Sure does, Logan agreed. In which case, I have some questions. I have a... Some, but only some answers. As expected. Alright, firstly, what killed El Oldie? Classified. Alright, yeah, I saw that one coming. Uh-huh, he just turned into that, or... Logan's end remained is silent. Great, Tony said. Alright then, is this place what I think it is? What do you think it is? Ruble got sent, you know, when the e geezer got him. You have a wide vocabulary for old men. I have a wide vocabulary of insults. That was a pause. Hey! Hey, I'm an old man! Sorry, ICO, them's the brakes. Both the men chuckled. Let's see, e e you're not feeling too daunted in short. We don't know. And also short, probably. It's made of stone, presumably. It's freaks, we think. Looks like a, looks about what, like what was described to us. So, am I in a pocket dimension right now, or are we actually in locatable space? Locatable space. Damn. Where? Do you really know the cosmos that well? Tony thought on it. No, I really don't. Good, then I won't then I'll have to go ask somebody, because they won't mean anything to you. Fair enough, alright, most pertinent question. What the fuck am I supposed to be doing? Logan gave a full belly laugh, which came over as grainy through the cheap speakers. I'm sure they had the fun to not have all their speakers be cheap, next to Tony's ears. It's as basic as you can get, Tony, reconnaissance. Oh, you don't know what's in there? Not really. Tony angled his head upwards to once again be looking at the temple. It looks like a heart. Wait, no it didn't. Not really, but felt like one. Through some invisible, intangible means, Tony could simply feel that there was something rooting it to the spot, and that instead of merely floating in space, it was somehow pinned, pulled top by cosmic tendons and musculature. And he could also feel, in some undefined, undefinable way, that there was blood. Old, dried, brown blood staining the void around it, like a stratosphere of old death, like a mummified remains of a murdered king. Fucking fantastic, he muttered. This time Logan didn't and respond. So that's why you didn't send me with a live feed, eh? Afraid of memes and such. Essentially, we can retrieve clearer visuals from your memories once you get out. That's why you took amnestics this morning. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that word, hmm? Memories. 
Ah, Logan took a deep breath. Classical, only evocative. Is it evoking something? It is. I love this part. Logan said, voice quieter as if he had his back. A point down, spoke to someone in the room with it. Continue, loud and clear again. You goofball. <laughs> what was that wide vocabulary of insults again? It was an insult. A science endured. Time to focus first. Anyways, it's all night sky up here, right? Well, I don't know if I'd call it sky, but... Shut up! It's a... So it's all starry and shit. Tony sighed. Well, I don't know. I don't remember much of my life before the foundation. Not sure if you guys did that intentionally, or, or it's just one of those side effects of coming into contact with so many things. We were just getting mind wiped in general. It always did interest me how you people were supposedly so specific with that shit. But I don't remember much. It's a point. This, however, tell you motion to the stars, even though Logan couldn't see. I've told you how I've, al how I've always wanted to be a diver, right? It's come up. Yeah, well, there was a moment when I was young. That I always think of when I say that. I guess we've got time, so... I've heard a story before. What? Really? Yeah, when you were exploring the crab tower. Well, Tony couldn't think of something to say. You fucking spoil sport. Fine, I'll skip to the relevant part. Thank you. It was that night, and it was the fullest sky of stars I've ever, I've ever seen. Looks like this. Happy? You killed all the lead up. Very happy. Tony might utter profanity to himself, long enough he was sure or anyone would be picked up by the microphone. But he was ready. He. But when I was first put in space, I thought, hey, maybe I'll be like swimming, because that's what I always heard. That it was kind of like swimming. But now that I'm up here, no. It's not like swimming at all. People call swimming weightless, but you still have weight, and... There's very definitely stuff all around you. In space, you're truly weightless, and while and I wave my arm around, there's absolutely nothing. It's completely different. Huh, is all Logan said. Huh, Tony repeated back at him. Sorry, not sure how to feel that one. Fine. The temple was getting closer now, but every time Tony looked up, it... Was well, too much weight on his chest, and he had to look away. Looks like I'm going to arrive soon. Is there a plan of attack? No, just get in, explore. We'll pull you out when we have when we feel like we have enough. So when I die, you won't die. I'm going to die. Tony wasn't scared of it. He died before. It's running in the moment. Oftentimes, very painful, but there's no such thing as a career D class who hadn't died before. Though he couldn't know the specifics, Tony figured he was one of the first D class to receive such a treatment. That they could be revived. So the disposability of the D the D of D class of them wasn't as necessarily damning. Tony felt a great deal of pride out at that. He was D eleven four to four. Sure, but he was also Tony Marquez, exploration and specialist. He, it was an honor in its own twisted way. Where the honor of it all relied so intrinsically on being a subhuman prisoner in the first place. But Tony pictured himself something of a star subhuman prisoner. He was very sure Logan thought of him the, him the same way. Same way. Oh shit! Tony nearly collided full, all force with the wall all before swerving upward. Out of his own head and back into reality. Or as close as whatever he was seeing was to reality. You alright? Yeah, fossil. Alarm. Up close, maybe 100 feet from the bricks, Tony could make out an organic tone to it. Cross the bricks, finds the same beat red as the rest of it twisted every crack and crevice in the brickwork. Some of the longer, thicker vines were even hanging down off it, running Tony of the old Tarzan movies. The architecture itself was stark. Redstone bricks and with not a hint of embellishment or iris free to them. Created miles of flat, featureless walls. Only occasionally did Tony see a window, or maybe a balcony, or sometimes, or some other outcrop that looked purely utilitarian. However, knowing the geezer himself stocked these halls, the only utility Tony could picture for them was a 
Or is it coalesce into a, or a labyrinth? A thought occurred. Hey, was the old man a minotaur? Huh? No, you've seen him. He was a human. A humanoid. Right, but he had people through an ever-changing labyrinth. That's pretty minotaur, isn't it? I guess so. If you've had that thought, the research team has too, though. Well, on the off chance that they were dead, communicate that back to them. The whole log will present to them and once we're out of here. So it'll work its way into the system. Perfect. Well, where should I enter? I'm, a, I'm right on top of it. We don't own have... A, we don't have even a tentative map on, of the thing, so enter anywhere or at your ready. Perfect again. I'll alert you once I find a nice spot. Tony circumnavigated the structure that's already found on several arches, probably the fanciest architecture he'd come across thus far. That acted as windows into a long, tall hallway. Found said nice spot, touching down. Tony passed between the pillars, as wide and tall as redwoods. Alright, now is when I start narrating everything I see, right? As always. Alright. It's huge. Right. Yeah, you, you know it's huge. But I mean, I'm in a hall right now, and it's like you've ever been in one of the, oh, the old European cathedrals? It was with the brickwork that feels older in history. It's like that. Now, I'm not a religious guy, but those places... Tony put his, his flashlight across the ceiling where those red vines were hanging down, making a, can, an awful, a canopy of red and sometimes a king brown. These places. I get why they are made it this way. It's like... When you're somewhere so massive... So old, and so quiet, it really feels like there's got to be something bigger. I don't know, do you get what I'm saying? Like when I'm here, it's like I can sense a god. There was a pause, and I said serious here on a voice. Do you feel like it might be a mimetic effect? Tony shook his head, even though Logan couldn't see. No, I mean, that's your job to figure out, but I feel this way every time I'm in a cathedral. Just was reminded. Moving on. His MMU hissed again as he started to push himself down the hallway. In the middle of space, the structure was utterly black, except for where he shone his light. And even then, and it seemed dim, as if darkness was not only the absence of light, but a force that he was constantly fighting against. The hallway was long, so he got to talking. By the way, this place, all red bricks and everything, it's overgrown with something. They look like red vines. The candy or just red colored vines? The latter. Got it. Should I touch them? One second. There was the sound of, Bo of Logan pushing the mic away from his face and muffled unintelligible speech. Then, probably not. Anything living, especially in a place with history like this, is potentially dangerous. We'd rather you just explore. Copy that. Tony reached a large arc, which led into a windowless room, deeper than within the temple. Oh. As he passed the precipice, he found the floor drop out from under him, as light didn't seem to reach anything. Alright, now I'm now floating in a, a nearly pitch blackness. So speaking of a history like this, what weaponry is at my disposal? Gun, knife, the usual. Alright, ah, right, weapons of the Kunhut Anomalous Fly variety. Fantastic. Tony's MMU hits him forward as his flashlight. I here and there caught on to outcropping of red bricks, which sometimes he put a hand on and used to propel him forward. 
He eventually hit another wall and another portal, which led to a tight hallway. He entered without a second thought. He used his FDMU to go through the hallway, and the brick felt soft. Hey, letting you know, I think that all of this might be some kind of organic. How so? The bricks have give. And bricks shouldn't have give. That combined with the vines just makes me think, you know, could be an uh, option. Noted. As Tony walked down the hallway, he noticed that it was that it started to take a sharp, sharp turn up and to the left. Using some of its its hard corners and instead becoming more of a tube-like shape. Hmm. What's happened? Well... Tony dug fingers in between two bricks which nearly separated from the wall and pushed himself upwards into the tube. Didn't this place have gravity or something? You know, back when the geezer sent people here. Yes. Where did that go? We're not sure, but it's possible that uh, at Skip F106 had reality eventing powers it could only exercise here. We know it liked to play with its victims, so maybe a chase was more fun if they could actually run. Fucked up, as expected. Right, well, the architecture here is nonsense. I'm currently going up a tube and, well, shit. What is it? Tony approached what looked like a blockage made of the same red vines as before, tangled into each other, except that at this proximity, he could see leaves on them. Old, brown, withered leaves, except they looked. My way is clogged with vines. Permission to cut them away? Permission denied. Go back the way you came. Tony rolled his eyes and approached anyways. Alright, no cutting, but what are you? He saw the leaves and put his flashlight right on them. They looked bumpy, mottled with brighter redder spots and thicker than any leaf he'd ever seen, with rounded edges instead of coming to points. Sagely ignoring advice, he reached out and touched one. His heart rate increased, but nothing happened. Well, nothing to happen to him. The leaf was rough, and it seemed to be part... You part of the seams as he pressed his thumb against it, revealing a, a brighter, more vibrant red beneath, which began to ooze out as he pressed harder. Hey, I have a theory. One second. One second for what? What are you doing? With a swift tug, Tony pulled the leaf off the, vi off the vine. Where its stem was, oily brown liquid pooled, hugging the vine due to surface tension, looking like a bleeding wound. Probably, Tony figured, because that's what it was. I just, uh... Tony's thought uh, was interrupted as he became suddenly disoriented. He took for granted how many different senses are cued for you. You have to get environmental or stimuli. So when the wall started it shaking in space of all places, he couldn't for a moment tell if it was him moving in or them. What is it? The walls are shaking. Wait a moment. Tony placed a hand against the wall, and through his suit and arm and his bones, the vibrations made their way to his cochlea. It sounded like... coughing. It sounds like something massive is coughing.
What? What did you do? I plucked a leaf from the vines. God damn it, Eleven! We told you not to touch them! They were the only interesting thing in this place. Ace, you expect me not to interact? You must be... Tony's head was pushed again into a wall, which made his skull come on the side of his helmet. Ow! The fuck? Update us, Eleven. Tony ignored Logan, instead lifting his head and waving his flashlight wildly at the tube. His first thought was that the vines had become animate and smacked into him. But they were just but they were, were just as much of a tangled mess as what as when he, he had first seen them. Turning his flashlight towards the other end of the hall, it was only blackness once the bricks receded from the light's range. I don't know. I actually don't know. I got pushed into a wall by something, but I'm seeing nothing. Tony stood up and then paused. Okay, and? Oh, I mean, I just stood up. Okay, and? No, I mean, I stood up. Gravity just kicked back on. Tony put two and two together. Fuck. Stay calm. Can you go back the way you came? No, not really. The cube curves upwards. I'd have to start climbing, so... Hey. First, just to start cutting through the vines right the fuck now. Tony heard muffled old mumbling while Logan conferred with the others in his room. Tony, for his part, wasted no time. Bring his backpack and search for some kind of Swiss army knife. Once he'd retrieve it, yes, came Logan's voice. Good, because I was going to do it anyways. Tony hooked his knife into the first spine and pulled down as hard as he could. The oily substance came spilling out, cutting the knife and his gloved hands. And the wall began to shake again. This time, I'm throwing Tony off his balance. Tony made another or several wild slashes, damning the idea that he was having to use a pocket knife as a machete and cut through the first several vines. Their gnashed edges poured what Tony had concluded must be some kind of blood onto the floor, making his heavy steps slip. That combined with the shaking, combined with the panic, so I had to get to Tony. I can hear you breathing. Are you doing alright? Having a hard time keeping my cool. Breathe. You have no reason and, and to believe anything is hot on your tail. You have time... 106 is dead, remember? I woke up something, RCO, and I don't like being at, the, at a dead end when something is groggy and irritable. Tony leaned against the wall to avoid sliding down and began to more methodically uh, defiance to get through them. Through his feet and, and his back, the vibrations carried that same noise of hacking, coughing, wet and loud, and sick. But then he was through. He wiped blood off his helmet to see, he, and found that the smears of the old brown stuff were so thick that he couldn't see more than a foot in front of him. Hey, hey, I have a problem. What would that be? The blood is covering my vision. Blood? Oh yeah, I think those vines are veins. They believe when I cut them, well, I just cut through a lot of them, and now I can't really see. Coughing is up, though. Is there any way to clean this off? Boy, ruffled mumbling. 
I'll be honest, Eleven, this was an unforeseen possibility. Damn it, no rag or anything in my pack? You may have a rolled up plastic tarp. Could see if that is something. Tony once more removed his backpack and placed it on the floor. With his vision impaired and his thick gloves leaving no ability to feel, finding anything was nearly impossible. Okay, I can't see and I can't feel. This is stupid. I have a different idea. Tony smirked. Alright, what is it? Well, I don't have to breathe, remember that? Yes, actually. There's your answer. Wait, eleven. Tony crashed his helmet into the wall, shattering the glass into a million pieces. The glass sprayed into his face, leaving him with more than a few uncomfortable shallow cuts, but he had resigned to dealing with it. He jerked the glass out of his hair, then leaned over to strike it out of the suit. Blood smeared glass eyes sprinkling onto the ground. He smirked. There, now I can see. Except nothing came out when he tried to speak. He held a hand up to his and he teased his brow. And Eleven? What was that? I heard a crash. I'm fine, Tony mouthed. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Nothing. Tony's eyes widened. Eleven? Tony? Tony realized the situation. Once he noticed the sack is the ink the lack of air entering his lungs, his hands suddenly clenched into fists and his whole body tensed. Of fucking course. He knew he could survive with that air, and he knew he was immune to decompression, but he completely forgot that he couldn't produce speech without a medium to produce speech through. Rex is and, and for some other way to communicate. Um, uh, he said without saying anything. He smacked his puffy glove hand into his forehead a few times, before suddenly putting together that he could tap the microphone directly with his hand, now that the visor was gone. Tap, tap. Eleven. Tap. Are you the one making that noise? Um, tap. Shave and a haircut. Tap, 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 tap. Okay, fantastic. What did you do? Tap. Right, you know Morse? Tony White is, is eyes and shrugged into the hallway. Tap. I'm going to take that as a no. I don't know what you did, but two taps for yes, one tap for or no. Are you okay? Three taps for maybe. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, fine. I'll confer with the, a team. Give me a minute. And Logan is gone. Fucking great. Tony continued down the hallway, now unimpeded. It also underestimated just how cold it would be. It was in fact the coldest he could possibly imagine. Nearly unbearable. The movements of his face became stiff as he went ever onward, sometimes checking over his shoulder just to be sure he was still free of pursuit. Soon enough, he came to a pit. Oh my god, it was a dead end. But with panic and intense lack of forethought, he had been able to add a pit at the expense of his ability. It's it communicate. Tony has head in, into the wall several times. Fine, fine. I dug my grave into. I guess I better jump in. But I didn't want to jump. He wanted to climb. With the gloved hands, climbing down wasn't going to be much of an option. He considered and then deciding to. It, it, and then started discarding the heavy thing. He, he, he pulled arms out, unvelcroed several appendages, unhooked hooks. Eventually, things started falling off him. Once he had off, he picked up the transmitter and... You there? Eleven, do you read me? What's that noise? Not that you can answer, but are you okay? 
Tap, tap. Good. Okay, keep keeping on. Tap, tap. Tyler took his knife and cut the wire out of the space suit so that he could have the transfer in his pocket and his mic. I could speak her hanging loosely around his neck. As long as the speaker was touching him, he could hear it, hear what it was saying. With that, he dug some food bars out of the backpack and stuck them in his pants pocket. And so he convinced himself that climbing down was a good idea. He winced at the thought that he would have no visibility. His flashlight would have to be kept in his mouth, and with there being no air in here, the flashlight didn't the flashlight's light didn't diffuse at all, seeming to just hit a wall and stop there. He would be blind for the most part, and able to communicate as his hands would be occupied. Fuck, he thought. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Crouch and poke hooked a foot into the tube. His stomach dropped from his midriff to the bottom of his, his hips. He closed his eyes and took a deep, fake breath. He flopped over so that he was on his belly and began to lower himself so that he could find a foothold. Quickly, he discovered that his foot, just like his hand had earlier, was forceful enough to slide if and in between the bricks and the wall, as if they had they separated just for his being there. At least it was going to be easy. He took more fake deep breaths, as if there was some magic number that, once he hit it, would make him completely calm and collected. There was no such magic number, or at least there was no gradient of calming before hitting said number. And he was tired of waiting for it, so he decided he just started descending. Deeper into the beast, he thought. He, except even with a sense of gravity, everything felt relative. He could, for all he, he knew, be headed towards the edge. One foot in between the bricks, the next foot in between the bricks, then fingers follow. Although once his right hand put the flash between his teeth, both his hands were being used for climbing. It was slow. He was on climber. He was strong, sure. He had been and on so many exploration missions, it was hard not to have some upper body strength from hoisting open jammed doors, pulling oneself onto ledges, throwing punches when necessary. He got a workout from just us from doing his job, but he wasn't practiced. It took his whole attention. Thankfully, there was nothing else to pay attention to. There was no noise except for the sliding of bricks where any touched him. There was no sight except a red splotch in his periphery from his um, the flashlight. That was Tony's minute world for a minute or so. His heart raced just a little bit faster every time he tried to place his foot somewhere. It wouldn't take, but he was able to fish around in the darkness for something that worked. Down and down. Was it curving outwards? Tony realized his body was at somewhat of an angle. His foot holds further in the wall than in his hand holds. If it kept curving outward, he would soon be able to cling, be unable to cling to it. He carefully took his left hand from the wall and felt himself swing ever so slightly, ever so gently to his right, which made him his chest tighten. Tony, do you read? Tony? Eleven? He saw his right and bent his left hand up towards his back, Ike, tapping twice. Tapping it twice. Okay, we might have a way to forcefully extract you, seeing as the limited communication is awful. Yes or no, if you're finding interesting things, it might be better for you to stay instead of us having to wait a week to start this operation up again. So he opens his eye as wide as he could with the cold sifting his muscles, and retracts to tap it again, only to find that his quick movement and swing of his arm had knocked the mic off of his shoulder. Everything tends to try to figure out how to write this. Tony? That was a lot of bumping. Logan must have heard the sound as Mike reached the end of its wire, dangling as it was above the floor. Void? Tony's free hand was put to another task, getting the flashlight out of his mouth and pointing it down.
Except that in this position, Tony couldn't turn around to see how far the ground was from him. There could be no ground, or it could be two feet away. Are you okay? Are you there? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Tony put the flashlight right back in his, into his mouth and tried to reach his arm around to grab the wire. So he couldn't and, and get quite get a grip on it. He felt like he might have had it when his right hand covered with sweat started to slip from his handhold. He felt his, his heart pressed so hard against his ribs, he thought he might have left grill marks. So he put his left hand back into Ash's crevice and left it there. Sweat poured down his head, a cold sweat that felt like winter rain coming from nowhere. <coughs> Excuse me. Eleven? Tony? Soon the muffled or mumbling. Again, Logan was pouring back. Maybe they were trying to summon him back. That makes sense, but that took time, and Tony was about to fall now. That did give him a good reminder, though. If I die, I just wake up again. The only real variable is how painful death is. Falling to one's death was sometimes painful, or it was such a fall it was instant, depending on the height and angle. Tony's grip was slipping and he didn't care or think about these things. Let go, let go, let go. He did it several times to himself before he could actually convince himself to do it. And then he was falling, or at least he assumed he was. There was gravity, but there was no air. All around him became an utter blackness, so there was absolutely no point of reference. With hands free, he started twisting to try and retrieve his mic, only to realize that by twisting in space, he was losing sense of direction. He could be falling on his head for all he knew. Instead, he landed on his hip and felt something break. There would have been a yell of pain had Eddie a medium to yell through. Instead, he heard, That sound bad. Are you there, Tony? That and more, he heard from under him flowing, a rolling inconsistent flow and as he finally pe had pressed his mind to retrieve his flashlight. He pointed underneath him to figure out what it, it was he was on. Okay, I need to stop the video. We're already 50 minutes in. There is no good stopping point. Okay, that was part one of the Path of the Thief. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll be continuing this tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!